probably the reason I, I got into to, to trialing was that, and it was probably coincidence, I, I got a, a dog from the next door farm here, um, uh, Alan's uncle, Tom Martin. And uh, I, I, I decided to try and train it to a very good standard. And I, I didn't know whether that standard was, was, was good or bad or indifferent. And I, I did enter a, a trial and Alan's actually got the program of it, uh, the Andrus trial, and it was held the, by the field that runs alongside the lane that runs up to Andrus Church. Um, and it was ran at that time by the, um, the Andrus Root Show Committee. And they ran the trial in Andrus. And I entered it. And of course, there was some, some very good experienced handlers um, in that trial. Um, and I, 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 I thought oh, I'd done quite well because I didn't know exactly what, what uh, mark I had, but Alan showed me the program because he's kept the program. And it was um, 73 out of 100. And that was the first, my first trial. And the winning mark was 88 and it mm. was Willie McTaggart. Mm. And I thought, wow, I'm not quite, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm reasonably all right here. I'm pretty, I'm in good company. So I, <laughs> I kept on doing it. That, that, and that, that's sort of what got me hooked into doing it. What would back that up? I spoke to a, I made contact with a man last night for his memories on his early trial. And he said, oh, you're talking to the wrong man. He said, I ever only done three trials. He said the first one was terrifying, stepping out into the ring among all the experienced handlers. Yeah. And he said, I just couldn't cope with it. He said, the dog coped with it better than me. He said, it's a big step when you yeah. put your reputation on the line. Yeah. And, and so much can go wrong. Well, I think my, my memory of it was I didn't go into it with any expectations at all. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but I was so pleasantly surprised because I think as, as well at Andrus there was that they used what was called a Maltese cross. Yes, yes that's right. Yes, which, yes. which is very difficult. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Very hard. Um, you see it occasionally on one man and its dog, don't you? There's no lead in it to it. It's, no. the, it's just two across basically and they can either ends. go yes. halfway into the middle and yes. then turn right or left yes but you have to go straight through yes. yes um but yeah it was quite difficult but yeah as i said that's what got me hooped um and i, I th think did you take part in that trial as well yes i i, I took part in it yeah it's one of my first trials i was in yeah uh, yeah yeah but what 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 really i, I liked about trial was was the camaraderie of it and yeah and, and talking to the yes. although you're only on this trial field for maybe quarter of an hour, the rest of the day you could spend socialising and, right. and, and talking and uh, meeting all the, all, all the other, especially experienced trials and, you, and you'd watch the other competitors and the, and the older trial man would be standing there, well he's doing this wrong, yeah. he's doing that wrong and, yeah. and you should, uh, and you'd learn by, 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 the, by your peers and it always helps. You yeah. acquire the knowledge all the time. Yes. And, yes. and, and th those, those older chaps, you know, that were very experienced, were very good to actually impart that knowledge as well. Yeah. Some yeah. could, some couldn't, some would, some wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. yes. Some yes. were always you know? a bit canny, but yes. yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. But yeah. Yeah, the likes of Albert and Vig and Georgie Quirk and Dougie Little, they were, they were always yeah. very good to help. And yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's a privilege to be able to pass on. I, I think it's a privilege to be able to pass on what, and let the next man get as much play. You see, it wasn't just dog trials that motivated us then. We were keen to, to do the best we could in everything, whether you were opening ridges for tinnips or plowing or whatever, you tried to do the best you could. Um, I was never involved with, with sheepdog trials, but um, the dogs we had at home were general purpose. They had to do everything, right. cows, sheep, yeah. everything. Yeah. And, um, they were good dogs, but we weren't we weren't motivated by sheepdog. Well, even though we supported, we weren't motivated. We never had a dog good enough to go to a sheepdog trial. Yeah, well, when I was growing up here, I mean, there was always dogs here, but they they were poor to average. You know, they would they would they would scare the animals yes, more than yes. anything. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, um, and and I never actually realised what a good dog could do. Mm. In, t in terms of saving you manpower and labor yeah. until I actually got one. And 
ever since then I've never really had uh, I've always had a, either a very very good dogs or average to good dogs yes. I've never I've, ne I've never gone back to what I experienced if you like when I was no. younger where no. where they just made it but then they had a lot of um, maybe help didn't they oh yes, yes. There was um, that, and that's fun. maybe the difference yes, whereas indeed. I was actually handling sheep mostly by myself yeah um, because I, I have um, as I was saying just before that I've, I've taken stock from here down to virtually Andrus village with with the two good dogs yeah. that I had by myself just um, and and not open and shutting gates the dogs I, I would actually be in front of them Yes. Walking in front, yes. one dog would would come behind, or both dogs would come behind, yeah. and then I would just call one dog to come and sit in a gateway, yeah. and it would sit in the gateway till you'd gone past the gateway, and then it would go back to the to, to driving the sheep behind them. So I've I've taken um, sheep down to virtually Andrews Village from but here are, by myself. There were times when you thought that the dogs knew thought knew what they what, what they wanted to do, yeah. What, what the next instruction was, yes. you know. I don't know whether that was true or not, but you got the impression that they were, they were thinking along oh, with you. Oh, oh yeah, they're very intuitive. Yes, yes. Ve yes. very, very I'm, intuitive. I'm sure very, that. very intuitive. Uh, you can you can sort of tell that a little bit on 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 the trial fields and even when you're handling them as as well in the fields because some dogs have to be actually told to do everything yes, yes. and others don't. Um, you, you'll get some dogs that they, when you command them left and right, they, they'll go to the left and right, and then they'll center again. Yes. They'll come back to the center, yes, and, and they'll balance them. And wait for the next instruction. Yeah, yeah and they'll keep going straight and, yes. and balance them. And they're constantly just doing this, balancing the sheep yes, and keeping yes. them going straight. So a lot of it is down to their natural, I don't know, natural ability. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Well, you you could always tell the dogs in trials that, that I I always called them they were almost like circus acts. Yes, yes. Where they only did what they were told to do. Yeah. yeah. But you see that when they fetch the ducks in. Yeah, and then you had the other dogs that had natural ability, um, and they used their own initiative a little yes, bit. Yes. So, and and the better dogs at the very high standards, they always have natural ability. Yes. They don't have to be told to do everything. But dogs that break away, but dogs that get, find them in a field and they will have, they will have rounded up a pack of sheep, won't they? Yeah. They will have rounded them up. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not doing anything with them, but they have yeah. circled them round the outside, haven't they? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That's, that's a natural herding instinct. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that's where you start from, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yes. My, my, my best dog I actually got from Alan's father and it was bred by Alan's father because Alan Alan's father bred some very 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 good dogs including your your dog Ben, ben, ben and because the, the, they and were Doug, little brothers weren't they yes I yeah and then Dougie Little's Merck which won the, the Max National several times and and Dougie went away to the international and, and won the Supreme uh, yeah uh, uh, competed in the international trials against England Scotland and Wales mm. And, and, and he did very well with them. But uh, no, there was, there was trials nearly every week, and, and that's what uh, I sort of missed too. That uh, every Saturday or every Sunday there'd be a trial, and we used to go around on them all, and it used to be a, a very good social yeah. day but, out. But, but Dougie, Dougie Little's Merck was probably the top dog here on the island for what? Six, six, seven, seven, seven years. years. Yeah, he won. And and but he he was the he was bred the same, wasn't he, as as Ben and Spot? No, but from a different litter. No, wasn't. No, wasn't different, different, different. Uh, he, he was bred. Different his, father. His, his mother, his his sister was was the mother of our two dogs. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Was there a preference between dogs and bitches? Not really. for, for me, I always preferred dogs because they were ten, tend to be slightly harder temperament. Mm. But I mean, this this dog is a bitch, um, and she's quite unusual because I think, as I was saying to you before, that in my experience, the sort of harder temperament dogs, harder to train, generally always turned out to be the the best dogs. Yeah. Um, the timid dogs, and um, you you can you can. It, it's very difficult when you're training a dog to coax them to do something. Yes. It's better. You, it's far easier to step them to back. To hold them back. To hold them back. Yes. To, yes. to keep 
thing in them back. Yes. You you can't really instill it into them if they haven't got that mm. instinct. Mm. You just can't. And you get that more from a dog than you do from a bitch. I tend to find because they just tend tend to be a little bit tougher, yeah. a little bit yeah. harder yeah. temperament. Um, but that, that that would be my experience. Yeah. But uh, this is this dog Jet is the first dog that I've ever had that's not only been a very good farm dog, also good trial dog, but she's also a a, a pet. She comes in the house every night. Yes, that's the first dog that I've ever experienced in my life that that's happened to. <laughs> yeah, and she she she's just a lovely dog. She, she's a pet as well as well as a good working dog. <laughs> I was at a trial at Bologloni in the field by the road where, where Dan uh, has to sail and the judge asked me to see if I would accompany him. He says, when you get sitting, he says, I'm going to sit in the van to judge the trial. He says, and when you get sitting in there on your own, he says, after about two hours, it gets very monotonous, very, and he said, it's not always easy to concentrate. He said, will you come and sit in the van with me and just keep me focused? I said, I will. And we went and the trial was going quite well until we got to the last dog and the last dog done quite well actually but I was I was stymied because after he'd finished the judge sort of woke up with the stock and he said how did he do he says I've nodded off <laughs> and he had to take my interpretation of how that dog ran <laughs> <laughs> And, and the end result was the yeah. dog finished second. Or you oh, yeah. must have given him a good mark. So, well, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know that my my judging was going to be taken into the final analysis. Yeah. <laughs> and the dog actually finished second. Right. But nobody ever found that out. Yeah, that, that yeah. The judge had nodded off. Oh, but I could very well imagine on a fine day, if you're sitting there on your own, yeah. Yeah. it could happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, yes, but, yes. But, but they, they go, going back to, to, to the trials here, there used to be a trial virtually sort of, I don't know, from the spring trial, which would be in May, would it be in May? April? Yes, end, end of May, just before practice week. Yes, yes. Virtually every Saturday, then yeah. running out yeah. um, into September, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so there'd be, I don't know, maybe up to 15 trials in virtually every parish of the island. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, we, we ran a trial here for about five years. Um, we called it Smale uh, Sheepdog Trial. Mm. Um, myself, Alan, Ronnie Conrade, um, Michael Corkle um, in, were involved in running it and organizing it. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. of the good things was though that sheepdog trials were not exclusively for shepherds. No, of course they weren't. They, and weren't. they, they still aren't. No, no. I think of um, Willie Cowell. Policeman, yes, yes. policeman. Yeah. Um, you know, running a dog. Uh, yeah. Uh, so they're not exclusively for shepherds. And, no, no. And that's good. No. That, that, that the I, discipline can be opened yeah. out. Anybody. And I think. I think one of my lasting memories is the, is the is the characters that were involved. You know, like you know, like Dougie Little and and, and Robert Convig. I mean, Quirk. real real characters that you you don't really. I don't know, you don't sort of come across them anymore. Just be careful now what you're saying because the younger, <laughs> the younger generation in next year will be saying exactly the same about you. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, oh, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. What makes a character? What yeah. makes a character? It's individuality, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't be afraid to do and say what you think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they were some real characters. Dougie Little, I mean, he was, he, he probably had some of the best dogs here on the island. I mean, he was, he was just a shepherd, wasn't he, on the mountains? He was a shepherd. His, his father came over to work for Cumbria in the 1930s and, and, and himself and his brother, Tommy Little, was a, was, a, was a judge, but Tommy won the first Manx National in 1939. Mm. So he, he, the, the family has a big pedigree of, uh, of uh, sheepdog trial and, and yeah. Dougie was a very good handler. Yeah. Found about six hundred acres. He was a shepherd for somebody else, but he was had a lot of sheep, about six hundred acres and around Serbia and Slop and mm. things. So yeah. He, yeah. Uh, he he was sort of the guy that I always sort of thought was was the top handler with the top dogs and he was my target to beat if I could beat Dougie Little and I, I only actually achieved it twice. 
but I could never because in some of these trials they had what was called a qualifying trial where you got your original mark and yeah. your original um, sort of out out, uh, out run and and, and um, etc. And then after that they picked the the top five dogs from that from that initial qualifying trial and they ran in a final. Um, and and that's it, it. Much it's much more involved in the original trial because you have to send the dogs back to get another a lot of of, of five yeah. sheep. So you run round the, the the trial course with ten, and then you have to separate them. It's 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 very difficult. And I, I mean, Dougie was just so good at that, and you could yeah. Yeah. you could never beat him doing that. You could get into the qualifier, but that was that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go back. To do, do, do a double lift it takes a lot of training. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. yeah. But uh, he, yeah. He, he, he had it off, didn't he? Oh yeah, he had it yeah. off. He, yeah. he had good dogs at the time. The, the, the other thing I, I can remember doing as well, I did have a go a few times uh, competing against Dougie and Robert Convig in, in, the, in the brace. Right. There used to be brace. Some of the trials used to run braces. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And that was difficult as well, but you had to have two dogs that were completely ind independent commands and independent whistles and and they had to do different things and that that was very difficult but again i had a go against dougie but i never beat him at that either arthur quail was trained he showed us we were on his place thrashing one day and he showed us a dog that he had trained to respond in manx I, I, yeah, all, yeah, yeah. All the commands were given. Jesh and Kithig. Aye. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, my, my best dog spot was, was commanded in Manx. Right, yeah. right. So they will respond. Yeah, and yeah. they've got to be able to respond because all the commands were not in the dictionary, were they? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, you could make them up. Yeah, and as long as they responded, yeah, that's all that mattered. Yeah, yeah. That's all that mattered. Yeah, Jesh and Kithig was, was, yes. uh, was my left and right. Yes. Arthur, yeah. Arthur Quayle was a very good hand and he brought a lot of dogs to the island and when he proved the breeding he, he, he was instrumental a lot in, yes. in, in... But there was another man that he wasn't a shepherd he was a, he was a, a cobbler by trade yeah. oh, right. Arthur yeah. Quayle was a cobbler by trade Yeah. And uh, but he was dedicated to the sheepdogs yes. Yes. probably somebody that needs to be mentioned as well is George Graham because he won the... Matthew the, the, Graham Matthew, Matthew Graham, Graham, sorry Matthew Graham, he, he won the, the Irish National here, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. The, the, At, the, the, the Isle Halo. Of, yeah, the Isle of Man people are, are, are put in with the Irish for the international, mm. for the, the international is England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales. And uh, it's been held on the Isle of Man three or four times. I think what the film should record is the fact that the Isle of Man could produce sheepdog champions, champions and dogs. Mm. Um, very high standards. Yes, indeed, and, yeah, and, yeah. and it shouldn't be underplayed that that we were able to to compete on an, yeah. on, a, on a level field. Yeah, yeah. It should be it should be recognised and yeah. recorded. Yeah. Um, you you probably got a be better knowledge. Who who was some some of the Manx hand handlers that competed in the national? I know Dougie Little did, didn't he? Dougie Little uh, in in the Irish national. No, in the national. In the, in, in the international. In the international. Uh, Dougie did, didn't he? Dougie did, Ronnie Convey did, Matthew Graham did, I think Georgie Quirk did in the race, and I think Arthur Quayle did too. Yes. Did he? Yeah. yeah. So they all, they all, but they yeah. were three, four top handlers that went away and qualified to represent the Ireland. The international. Yeah. Because mm. the Isle of Man was put in with Ireland, so yeah. they were representing Ireland and then four nations. One of the things that impressed me about English trialling was a man called Longton. Oh yes. Yeah. He seemed to be top of the pile in his area at that time. Was, wasn't your father friendly with him? Yeah, yeah. Tim Tim Longton. Tim, Long Tim Longton. Uh, yeah. Yes. And his son now Timothy, and he's got his grandson now uh, Michael. They are still all competing and still coming yeah. to the Isle of Man and competing yes, all yes. over this summer. Competing. Yes, yes. They're up yeah. in Cumbria somewhere, aren't they? Uh, Lancashire. 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 Oh, right, just right. outside Lancashire. Lancaster. Right. Yeah. But yeah. but that was a name they rose to the, and and to me, a non-competitive. I still remember the name, yes. and if that name comes up, I can associate Sheepdog Town with him. So uh, they do make a, uh, they do make an impression on on society. They mm. do, they do, well, yeah. and it's a good impression, isn't it? It's it's yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've 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 started to actually sort of compete in the trials again after a what, thirty year break. Um, I, I competed in the, the trial at sort of uh, Bishop's Court, Richard Crow and Wack, uh, Ian uh, mm. ran, so uh, 
uh, last year and this year so yeah I'll, I'll, I'll probably yeah start start doing it with uh, but it, it, it is difficult because it's a very specialist thing because if you're just using your dog for farm work sort of handling five sheep is, is, is a very different thing and, and, and you really need to sort of you, you need to get them used to actually just use, using them on small amounts of sheep um, and in the past I haven't had time to do it but hopefully maybe I might have a bit more time going forward I think there's a bit of a resurgence isn't there? there's quite a few youngsters now there is a few few young lads yeah hope, getting involved yeah encouraging them to keep going it's nice to see yes yeah that's where the future lies, isn't it? It's, it's getting the younger element involved. Yeah. And yeah. it's not always easy. There's so much distraction now. Well, I, I think probably what, what it is, I mean, and it's the same whether it be agility or any of these sort of, um, uh, you know, pastimes or, or sports that, you, that, that dogs compete in alongside humans. I think that the, the thing that sort of probably is the draw there is the fact that dogs can be trained to do such amazing things yeah. and it and and once you realize that then there becomes a connection and you sort of get addicted to it a little a little bit yeah. but the dog is not only your your partner your work buddy he's also your friend isn't oh, he oh yeah and yeah there has to be a connection there. exactly exactly yeah. and there has to be a connection yeah yeah it's it's and it's not just a connection about discipline no um, it, it, it's a connection, he you know. It, it's a mutual connection of, of of affection in a way. Yeah, he wants to be with you when you go out in the morning. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to look. You know that he's there behind you, yeah. or she. Yeah. My father always used to say that any man that was good with a horse was good with a dog. Yes. Yes. Oh yes. Effect. Well, I think they go together. It's, yeah. it's mutual respect. Yes. Mutual yeah. respect. Um, I can go to the field and shout to my horses and they'll come to me and other people say, how do you do that? And I said, what? Yeah. You know, it, to me, it's it's quite natural. When mm. I went to work on the horse trams, we had to use head collars. And I said, we never used a head collar at home. How did you lead your horses into the stable? Mm. I said, you caught a, a, a handful of fall off and they followed you in. Mm. Um, but that, that didn't, that wasn't achieved overnight. Mm. That was a relationship that you built up with the horse. I went to Thin Tinks for a man once, Sammy Lee's up in Bolo Oats, and he was going in the ridges ahead of us with the drag and didn't take any notice of him really because Sammy always spoke very quickly and jumped to understand him. And he, I was hearing him chuntering to the horse as he was going. It wasn't until we went over to see what he was doing. He had no lines on the horse. He had no lines on the horse at all and the horse was just responding what he was telling them to do right. and there again that doesn't you don't arrive at that situation overnight no, no. that's a relationship that's built up yeah, the yeah. horse knew what he wanted he knew what the horse wanted and that's the same yeah. with the dogs yeah uh, but um jeff morton said to me a horse is basically a stupid animal compared to a dog he said the dog is top of the pile when it comes to brains oh yeah he can think for himself yeah yeah, um, yeah. and I, I think a lot of people now have collies as pets as well, don't they? Yes, yes. And I, I, again, I think it's because once they've had a collie, because um, they're, they're very intelligent dogs, very, very intelligent dogs. And I think once, once even as a pet, someone's had a collie, they'll continue have, to have a collie. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, collies have been bred for their brains rather than their yes. looks. It doesn't really yes. matter yes. what they, it's not so important what they look like. No, no. It's that they're bred for their ability and they're able yeah. to think for themselves. But they've got yeah. a disposition. They're not aggressive, are they? They're, you know, they're friendly, oh, yes. amicable animals, aren't they? Yes. Oh, yes. Compared to, you know, some little dogs. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. They think yeah. they're lions and, and they're yeah. only this high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they show their teeth and they bark. But you don't <laughs> get that with cold dogs. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We, we used to run about a trial here every year maybe for about five or six years and um, a guy I used to know well from Andrews Village um, John Lord he used to come and um, uh, judge here um, and and I can remember in one of the fields um, 
I, I, I was running and and I, I, I think I had an exceptional run. I mean, you know, say for example, it, it could have been up in the 90s uh, mark out of 100. And right at the very end of the trial, I had these very difficult sheep that I, I got into the pen, but there was one sheep that turned and I couldn't shut the gate. Yes, yes. I couldn't shut the gate and you're not supposed to touch the sheep, you see, either with the gate or yourself, or if, if you have a stick, yeah. you're not supposed to touch them. If you touch them, you're gonna be disqualified. Oh, I didn't okay. know that. Yeah, 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 you're not supposed to do it. Um, so right, right at the very end, I couldn't get the gate shut. And I, and, and I was literally, I mean, six inches away from this sheep and it wouldn't go in and I couldn't get the, the gate shut. And I knew I'd be running out of time because I, I thought, well, it's, it's got to be getting near whatever it was, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And I thought, you're not going to beat me. And I just hit the, hit the sheep on the head with the stick and shut the gate. And of course I got disqualified. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's that one story I, I can remember. Yeah. But I wasn't sorry. I didn't repent. <laughs> Arthur Quayle told me a story about a trial and I'm not going to mention any of the other names um, they ran the singles first and Arthur said I was running last in the singles and we completed the singles he said and then we went straight on to the brace and they wanted to put me back in the brace right away Yeah. and he said this is not really fair. He said, my dog has just run. Can you not give her 10 minutes to recover and put me on second? So they had to think about it and said, yes, that would be all right. Now then, the man that was releasing the sheep at the top of the field was son of the first competitor. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Now the competitors have swapped places, but the man at the top doesn't know. Didn't know. He's let out the sheep that was intended for the man that was going to go first. Yes. <laughs> and he said they were right comedians. He said, right. and if we would have followed the rules, I would have got those sheep. Right, right. So, so they were hand selected sheep. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he said they were more akin to goats than sheep. Right. <laughs> well, that's the other thing, of course, in trial, and it is very much about the look of the draw and yeah, yes. whether you get. You know a batch of five cooperative sheep yeah. and if you don't um no matter how good you are um you're probably never going to well you get a good score you're your, never going to your example is saying they don't even have to be five one is enough to disrupt one you. one can do it yes. absolutely yes. One, can one can do, do it. it yeah and very often set the others off yeah one can do it yeah. absolutely they can yeah ab absolutely you got any good stories well Alan? not really that's not really good story. My father used to, in the 1950s, used to bring puppies in from Scotland. And they used to come in by train, and, and himself and I think it was John Quayle, the Koshigs, both bought puppies from the same litter. And they both came into Ramsey, Ramsey uh, train station in a box, and they had to stand then and have a, a debate about who was going to get which puppy. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but in the end, it all worked out well because they both turned out to be good dogs. So, uh, but it can be uh, the way that uh, it, it was a bit, a uh, bit of an argument at the time of who was going to get which pup. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Mm. Yeah. But my yeah. father then he used to breed puppies and he used to send them away too. He's, he's the furthest he sent a dog was all the way down to Kent. And he used to get up. At, he used to live on the farm here next door at Nakaduni and. Yeah. We'd get up on, get, get up at five o'clock, put the puppy in a tea chest, put it on the back of his bike, cycle down to Sobey Bridge and put the puppy on the train at seven o'clock in the morning and we'd be into Douglas for the nine o'clock boat and then yeah. in, into Liverpool for dinner time and all yeah. over the UK and you so, may think you may think it was cool, but there was always somebody about to look after yes, the dogs. Yes, and yeah. there was always somebody giving them water or, or, yeah. or a bit of food or there was always there always uh, yeah. Was there ever an instance of a dog with no breeding winning? Uh, well, it depends on what you nothing, nothing stands out. A mm -hmm. lot, lot, of, lot of these dogs um, are, are what 
what's called line bred. Ah, uh, yes. So, yeah. so they they may be got. Um, they may be even sort of breeding with first cousins. Yes. Or there's certainly grandparents links in both sides yes. of the dog and the bitch, and that that's that. It's sort of concentrating the traits of of that yeah. particular. I'm, I'm, breed. I'm, the only reason I ask that, uh, in show jumping there was a horse fox hunter was just one step away from pulling the milk cart and yet won this national competition and everybody was astounded because the horse had absolutely no breeding at all and yet mm. was able to win this national competition and I wonder whether it happened with dogs. Whether I, I don't think it does, to be honest, in the in no. the in the in the top trial dogs no. because of this element of blind breeding. Mm. So they're bred the, the way they're bred is is very highly selected yeah. for certain traits, and I, I assume that's the same with all pedigree breeding. Yes, but it certainly is with with collies. Right. Yeah, it certainly is with collies.